Join us as we camp with our truck camper and hike in the High Peaks region of New York. We've made it up to the Keene region now and it's raining on and off. And this weekend is going to be mostly a hiking weekend, but it's also going to be like the first weekend where we're actually camping with a truck camper. And we're really excited and we're hoping it goes well. Right there is a popular spot where people are always pulling off and taking a photo because on a clear day you get an even better view of those mountains up ahead. But as you can see, it's still a pretty great view even with this weather. This is just another example of why we wanted the truck camper because if we had some type of travel trailer, even though I know this road, um, I still might not be able to turn around if the site at the end is full. So there is just another benefit of having a camper on the back of the truck. I think we found our camp spot, now I just gotta back in. We're here, as you can see, and it's still raining a little bit. So just gonna head down here and check out what it would look like if we had a ground tent. The car is probably like 25 feet behind me at this point, and this is a nice little flat spot to put a tent. But as you can see, there's a marker over here. And even though we're at the official campsite, since we're in the High Peaks region, you're still not allowed to have a fire here. I think it's like 52 degrees out. And even though it's raining just a little bit, it's still kind of cold out. So I'm really glad that we have the interior space of the truck camper to like go hang out in and make dinner in. We made sure to fill up both propane tanks before the trip just to be safe because one of them was completely empty and I'm just turning them on now. Instead of our little step stool tonight, we have this rock, which works out pretty good. How is it in here? It's pretty good. I'm just getting up the cutting board so I can cut up some cheese. Cool. Eventually we want to have all of our cooking stuff stored under here, but this past week my dad made us these basic drawers that just slide in both slots underneath the dinette and they're not finished yet. We want to paint the front of them black and get different latches. But so far, it seems to work out really well, and it just makes a lot better use of this space under here. And even though it's not that cold, I decided to turn on the heater because I am just excited to use it and have a heater. This heater is working great. It's only been a few minutes, and you can see it's warmer in here than it is outside by a good bit. And Kate's making our sandwiches for tomorrow, and I just got the dinner stuff out. We are having this mushroom risotto and chicken tonight with a little salad, and I also just got the uh, stove set up, and it's very cool because it has this like easy plug in. And since I already turned the propane on out there, all I have to do to get it going is just flip this up this way. I just got the chicken going and our pan lid fits on there perfectly. And this is what we use for rub. It's called the buttery steakhouse rub. And I think it's our current favorite. Before I started cooking, I made sure to crack this window and I started this fan a little bit just to get the fumes from the food going out that way. That's the second car that just drove by within the last 10 minutes. So this is definitely a popular area and I think the chicken and the risotto are done at this point. Cool. Everything looks really good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I feel like I should have bought a truck camper years ago. This is great. Some people just walked down the road and it looked like they were just going on a walk. They went down that way. We just cleaned up from dinner. And we've had the heater off for a little bit now and it's back down to 66. It did get up to 71 at one point and it's 56 outside. And now we're just going to go on a little walk, probably for like 20 minutes and come back and maybe play a game and then head to bed because we want to hike pretty early in the morning. Overall, it's still pretty cloudy, but it's not raining anymore and it's really not that bad out. You just saw Kate walk past site one, so we must be at site two. We're back down at the end of the road now, and we did notice that there is an outhouse over this way. You can kind of see it. It's really not that far in right there. Are you ready to continue on? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. And I think this is where we're going to walk tomorrow. I think we're going to leave the truck camper at the site and walk to the trailhead. We just like our campsite, and we don't want to lose it for tomorrow night. We're down at that bridge now, and it looks like there is some good erosion that's been happening right over this way. And this is private property. They have signs up that's not a public parking area. The sound of the stream is really nice. And it's even more peaceful if you look over this way. There's still some water flowing down over that way. I hear another car coming up behind us. Some cars have already passed us. And the only thing down here is the trailhead. I bet people are wondering why we're walking here and why I'm in sandals, but they probably think we're going to hike and we're all unprepared. 
decided to turn around now and now uh, two more cars are coming up. So maybe it's a good idea that we're walking to the trailhead tomorrow morning anyways, because it could already be full. Yeah, you can park there at night, but you're not allowed to sleep there. You're not allowed to sleep in your car for some reason, then they do have signs up or else we would have parked at the trailhead and just slept there. I think I see another truck camper coming up. Oh yeah. We're back at the truck now and it's probably like 8.30. And as you can see, there's two cars driving up this road now. So this is why we really don't want to lose this spot because this area gets super popular. Good morning. We slept pretty good last night, although it did rain in the middle of the night and it was kind of loud. It's right about 6 a.m. and we were just using the heater for like the last five or 10 minutes. I got off the map right before we went just to show Kate and show you guys where we're going. So we are parked right here next to that little trail. We've got to walk a mile down here to the lodge and then we are taking this trail over to Street and Nye Mountain and it is a 1.2 mile walk from where we are parked down to the trailhead. And we're here and it only took us 20 minutes to walk from the car. We just signed in at the trail register and this is actually an unmarked trail, but they still like to keep track of how many people use it. We're a few miles in now and we've reached the really only challenging part of the hike, which is this water crossing, which doesn't look too bad right now. But if you do this earlier in the spring, you kind of like have to take your shoes off and basically you're going to get wet. We're pretty close to the top now, and as you can see. We have a pretty good view, even though it's cloudy, because I know the summits are wooded. And here's the map, just so you can see where we are. Nye Mountain's here, and Street Mountain is over there. The intersection was back there a ways, and now you can see we're at Nye Mountain. And you can see the view heat from here is great. I've only been here one other time before, and that was February of 2021. And I don't think I was taking any videos back then. And so far the trail has looked nothing like I remember just because there was like two feet of snow on the whole trail the last time I was here. Going up here was pretty fun. It was nice to come back up and now we're going to be heading over to Street Mountain. Also, as far as time goes, it's been three and a half hours so far, but the first 25 minutes was us walking to the official trailhead. And I think we're there. The sign should be right on our left. Yep. And we're here. Here come towards me. So we're both in the sign. Oh yeah, it looks like we're definitely gonna have some type of view over here. Yeah. The Nye wasn't that far up then. No, it, it wasn't. wasn't. that far, there's no This view is better there than I was though. expecting. Yeah, this is nice. We're heading back to the camper and that viewpoint was awesome. And I think I'll just see you when we get back to the truck camper and I'll tell you how long it was and how many miles we did. They've got a little info thing going and you can see there's a lot of cars parked here now and there's still a lot of cars down this way. So we are really glad that we did not leave our campsite. And we're back and it doesn't look like anyone messed with the car, at least from here. In total, we did 11.94 miles and our total time was eight hours and 28 minutes. We've been enjoying the campsite and unpacked our hiking bags. But now before it gets any later, we're gonna try to take a shower using the Julka hot water heater that came with the camper. And I brought five gallons of water with us and there's also a bag of accessories that the guy gave me. So I got to look through that and figure out how to get the Julka on and all connected. But first, I'm going to open the shower awning. I'd say the quality feels a little bit better than our DFG off-road shower tent that I have on the Forerunner. And it's definitely larger. It's just like a much bigger space. But the only thing, I wish it was mounted up a little higher or at least the truck sat up a little higher, one of the two, because Kate and I are pretty short people and I guess it works fine for us. But if you were taller and if we were on level ground right now, um, any person that's tall, their head would be like right up here. Also, if it was up higher, it'd be up off the dirt. But I guess if it was up too high, then you wouldn't really be able to stake it down. Here's a look at the label, Easy On Cube. And it is very big. I don't have any floor in there. And this is actually a pocket that you can put stuff in. I got the Julka unzipped and I'm trying to figure out how to turn it on. And for the longest time, I thought that this power cord that the guy had like pre-routed in there powered that, but that is not actually the case. This has two batteries in it. They're like big D batteries and they're right here in this little compartment. And one of them is corroded. I didn't even know batteries were part of the system. I thought this plug was gonna go into there, but it turns out that this plug actually powers the water pump right there so you always need batteries apparently to run this model julka 
and obviously we don't have any extra like D or whatever those are batteries with us. I'm going to run to the Lodge store or the nearest Stewart's, which is like 10 minutes away and try to get some because we really want to try this out and are bummed that this thing requires batteries, even though you have to plug in the water pump. We feel like it should be uh, one or the other, like both should be batteries or both should be plug in. I'll see you later. I'll be back soon. You should time me and see how long I take. All right, ready, set, go. All right, see ya. I'm right outside of Lake Placid now, and that took me right about 10 minutes, so that's really not bad at all. And there are two Stewart's here. Those are just like the local convenience stores, and that's where I think I'm gonna have luck in the D batteries. I think this is it, 729. Looks like the same thing to me. We got two batteries, and I got them from Stewart's. Perfect. And we got everything set up, and it's working now, and there was a couple problems. I did not have these fittings on tight enough. You really have to like push them on hard in order for the quick disconnect to actually work all the way. And then we also read online, I looked it up and downloaded a PDF before I came back here. We learned that this LCD screen doesn't like click on until the pump goes and there's water coming in. So you really can't turn this on until water is already like flowing through it. The neat thing about this setup compared to our old setup is the shower wand that Kate has in there with her actually has an on off button on it. After a minute, we figured out that right in the middle was like the perfect temperature spot. And it does tell you right on here what the exact temperature is, which is kind of cool. How was your first shower experience? It was really good. I liked it a lot. And it is a neat feature being able to like turn it on and off with that little wand. But I think like the temperature was perfect. Other than folding in the still wet shower cube, we're all set from outside and we're making dinner now. And Kate's making us these nice looking little salads. And then in a second, I'm going to be starting some chicken. And we're also going to be doing this. A Korean inspired bulgogi beef fried rice with kimchi. These fries are looking really good and just a minute ago we set off this smoke alarm. The chicken is still going but the fried rice is done and it's looking pretty good. We cleaned up from dinner and we were just hanging out for a little bit and it's right about 8 p.m. now and I decided to go on a little walk. Kate didn't feel like going but uh, I think when I get back we're gonna be playing a card game or something like that and then heading to bed pretty early again. I got down to where I could almost see what kind of car was parked at Site 7, and then I decided to turn around, and this was a nice little walk, and I think it's about 8.30 now. Good morning. It's like 7.45 now, and it's 47 degrees outside. We're just hanging out and Kate's reading. I really didn't sleep that good for some reason. We got all ready to go on the hike about 30 minutes ago and then it started raining. So we've just been sitting in here hoping it would stop, but it hasn't. So we cleaned up the camper and got it ready for driving. And now we're just gonna head into Lake Placid uh, just for something to do and see the town. And there should be some type of uh, marathon going on today. see all the runners going up this hill and some people are slowing down and other people are doing really well. I'm sure it's a hard course. This is our first time parking in a very small parking lot with the truck and truck camper and we're not sticking out at all but I did have to get really close up here like very super close but Kate was directing me so it worked out pretty well. I bet this house is like 600,000 or more just because of where it is and you can see there's the race. I think the finish line might be up here somewhere. We decided to stop at this place called Origin Coffee and I got a coffee drink and I think Kate got some matcha thing. And it's cool, so there's a dog in here. I've stayed at that Best Western before on a work trip and I've never noticed this, this craft beer tasting room. So maybe on our next trip up here, we'll have to stop and try it out. Yeah. And I spotted another truck camper down this way and I think I have to go check it out and see what kind it is. There's a Rivian truck pulling up right there and there's a cool van. And this is the toboggan chute. In the winter, you can uh, pay to go down onto the ice. And the truck camper is actually a cash camper, which I haven't heard of before. Now we're looking out over Mirror Lake, and in the middle there, you can see a couple people paddle boarding. That looks like a self-converted van, maybe. I just came in here to take my sweatshirt off, and actually it says we're getting 116 watts of input, so I think I was wrong. I always thought for the longest time that the solar panel on the front of the Scout was an 100 watt panel, but it might actually be a 200 watt panel. We're just outside of Lake Placid now, and we're actually going to head back to where we were camping and hike Mount Van Hovenberg, and it's going to be about 4.2 miles round trip. 
We just had some sandwiches and are leaving the truck and we think in total this is going to take us a little bit more than two hours. Kate has her trail running <laughs> shirt on so she's obligated to trail run. The trail got pretty narrow and I think we're coming up on a little pond. I don't know if this is the way the trail goes. Wow. I bet that's where we're going right up there. We must be here. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. This is a great view from here. We definitely came from right around from that pond. Your sunglasses are really reflective. You can kind of like see the view in them. Just coming down now from the summit. And as you saw, there's a really pretty view. It took us 55 minutes to get up to the top and it was about 2.1 miles. And we had a good hike, and I think this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed our little weekend and our first time actually camping with the truck camper. And we'll see you next time.